Welcome to Kujo Sound. This is Unity and Wise Integration. Welcome back to Kujo Sound, and this here is my Wise and Unity series. Well, this episode, again, isn't going to be much about Wise. It's more likely going to be about Unity and how we can use some colliders and some raycasting here for a more interesting approach that we can then later use in Y. Now, the point of this video is that I want to show you how you can instantiate an object where your raycast hits something. The reason for this is that we are going to be using that creatively to create sounds for us in Ys later. But the whole point is that if you do not understand what you can do with a raycast or if what you can do with the Ys or what you can do with all these things combined, then you might as well do nothing because all these tools that I've been showing here or sh tools that other channels show, if you do not understand how they work, if you do not understand what you can do with them creatively and work freely with them, then they are pointless. This is not the correct way of doing it. There is never a correct way of doing it. Maybe there is a correct way of doing certain things along the way, but the creative work is the important part. And if you want to be a sound designer, working creatively with your tools is a must. So you have to understand that. So what I want is that we have our fire barrel right here and it fires a ray whenever we are behind this specific object here. It doesn't when we're behind this. Well, it does fire a ray all the time, but this one doesn't block the signal and this one does. So whenever we are behind this, we want to spawn an object. The reason why we want that is because I want to create some gun sounds and I want to check if we are close to a wall. That means that we on this object can create a sound that sounds like it's an early reflection from that wall. It will be really, really interesting. So what first what we're going to do is that we are going to be creating an empty game object here that we will just call weapons impact because this is going to be our prefab that we can use. I have already created a folder down here that I've called physics. Well, maybe it should actually be audio physics. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop our game object down here so that we save it as a prefab and delete it from the scene. The point of this is that we can spawn this object wherever we want. So let's just go ahead and say we want a box collider over here on this object. And it's just, it's just a small box collider so that we can actually see it once we get this going. Now, remember from the previous video that we have our script right here. And what I want is that whenever our Raycast hits something and it shows the red color. I want it to spawn this object and just want it to spawn it once, but we can also just spawn it forever if we want. Then you can see what I mean, that it hits something. This means that, of course, this shouldn't be happening on a ray that is being fired all the time. It should, of course, only happen on things that are being thrown once in a while. Like if we shoot our gun, the raycast is only fired every time we shoot the gun so that we can generate a trustworthy soundscape. Now, in order to do that, first of all, we need to establish a public game object, which we will then call our impact sound object. And this object we will instantiate. Now, when I save right here over in Unity, you will be able to see on our script that we have with our occlusion thing that there is a game object here. Now, you don't have to drag and drop from your game over here. You can also just drag and drop from your project folders down here. So our weapons impact goes here. This basically means that we want this object to spawn every time our raycast is blocked by something, by what, some of the things that we have told it to be blocked by. How does this work? Well, down here, once it becomes red, we want it simply to instantiate. And what should it instantiate? Down here, you can see in the description that you instantiate and you just instantiate an object. And what did we call it? We called it impact sound object. And you have to type in comma where do you want it to spawn? And that's the interesting point because right here we need a vector three because that is the coordinate that we want and we want to call it point of impact. And it's equal to the out info dot point. That is quite simple because out info is the information that we get from our raycast whenever it hit. And out info dot point is the vector three that you get whenever it hits something. So now we already have that. So we can say here, point of impact. Now, this also takes an input called a quaternion, which means how is it rotated? And we don't necessarily want to rotate it at all, but you have to define it. So we write quaternion.identity. This means that it simply just spawns and is rotated in the order that the original object was, was rotated. 
and that's not important to us, but it needs to know. Anyway, once this happens, when I play my game, you will see that once I go behind this wall here, then our ray will become red, and you will see a thousand of these uh, weapons impact spawn. We will be able to pause, you will be able to see one of them, and you will be able to see that they spawn along the line of this wall. There we go. So if I pause here, I click one of these, you can see as I scroll through them, they are basically spawned along the line of as I walked through this wall. These are per frame, so this is this is completely useless. As of course, there's a, there's a thousand of these. We don't want that. We don't want a memory leak like this. So we could potentially say up here. Let's, let's make a private bool. It's just for debugging purposes. Fired once, and it's false like this. And then down here we could say that if fired once. is false, then instantiate this one here. And fired once becomes true. And that way it only happens once. So let's play again and I'll show you that it spawns. And you can see that it spawns right there. So if I'm walking behind this object over here, my ray becomes green and nothing happens. And once I go behind this one over here, it becomes red and it spawns a clone of this specific object here. This means that on this object, you can add scripts or any item that you want, or even a game object that plays a sound, kills itself when it's done or whatever. It's just very, very simple. We're going to be using this creatively to create a trustworthy environment that has early reflections from walls that you're walking past. I hope this was a very, very informative video. It's very short and it's very descriptive on how to do ray casting and how to do the point emitter and figure out how to create objects where this happened. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time. Thank you for watching Kujo Sound. If you want to know more about game audio, Unity, and WISE integrations, please like this video if you enjoyed it and hit subscribe if you want to know more. Or head over to patreon.com forward slash Kujo Sound, where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel and the time I take off to create all this material. I would really appreciate it. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Kujo Sound and Bjorn Jacobson signing out.